Ladies, brothers, it is traditional and customary that Cap Alpha present the portrait of Robert E. Lee to each of our chapters at the installation banquet, and it is my honor to make this presentation tonight. Robert E. Lee is the spiritual founder of the Cap Alpha Order. As president of Washington College after the Civil War, Lee guided our forces at Alpha Chapter as he guides our order today. Lee was never an initiated member of Cap Alpha, but to our founders, he was the perfect gentleman who embodied the traits that all men should have. It's important to note that KA celebrate Robert E. Lee as the president of a small college, but we also remember Lee for his many accomplishments such as the commander of the Corps of Engineers for the United States Army during the Mexican War, tracking down bandits in Texas as a young U.S. Army Lieutenant, the Commandant of the United States Military Academy at West Point, the General who was offered command of the Union forces by President Lincoln, and the Commanding General of the Army of Northern Virginia during the Civil War. We choose KAs choose to remember the Robert E. Lee who turned down many lucrative offers to guide a small college in his beloved Virginia. He felt a duty to assist young men making the difficult transition from wartime to peace. The war had crippled Virginia's economy and along with it the prospects of Washington College. The school's buildings and library had suffered extensive damage and pillaging during Union General David Hunter's raid in June of 1864. In fact, the only reason the school wasn't completely destroyed, like its close neighbor, BMI, was that it bore the name of our nation's first president. Only four of the school's professors remained, and the student body had dwindled to 40 young men. Though the school's rich history included an endowment of stock by George Washington, its outlook seemed rather dismal. But Lee was used to lost causes and had already rejected an offer to be Vice Chancellor of the University of the South as well as a position with the University of Virginia. After Lee accepted the position in Lexington, an English nobleman offered him a job with an enormous salary of $50,000 substantially more than the $1,500 Lee was paid by Washington College. Lee rejected the offer and with his ever-present spirit of self-denial, humbly replied, I cannot leave my present position. I have a self-imposed task. I have led the young men of the South in battle and now I must teach their sons to discharge their duties in life. The Confederacy's greatest soldier, Robert E. Lee, was descended from an old and honored family. His father was the Revolutionary War hero, White Horse Harry Lee, and friend of George Washington. Partly because of the military, military tradition in his family, young Robert Lee decided to become a soldier. He entered West Point Military Academy and was graduated second in his class. In addition, he accomplished the almost impossible task of graduating without a single demerit in four years. As Virginia considered secession, Lee faced the hardest decision of his life. As much as he cared for the Union, he was first of all a Virginian. He could not bear to think of a national army invading Virginia to coerce it back into the Union or of himself as possibly leading that army. After days of deliberation and prayer, he decided his right course was to resign his commission in the United States Army, return home, and offer his services to his home state of Virginia. Kappa Alpha strives to preserve the standards which were so important in the life of Robert E. Lee and strives to present them meaningfully to our members, both undergraduate and alumni. In the times that we are living, our country is filled with men of questionable character, including some of those we have elected to leadership positions. In selecting those leaders, we should be searching for men who want to be like Lee, men with purity of soul, 
honesty of character, and duty to service. Having Robert E. Lee as our spiritual founder is truly a blessing for KAs. Over the years, as I have grown older and wiser, I've learned, sometimes the hard way, that you could do a lot worse than the turn of the general in times of difficulty or confusion over what is the right thing to do. In those times, you can take inspiration from a man who put duty and honor above self-promotion and profit, who demonstrated loyalty and respect, who spread goodwill and leadership, who demanded that every boy at Washington College must always be a gentleman in word as well as in deed. The following incident recounted by a Union soldier at, Get at Gettysburg is most touching and illustrative of Lee's Christian grace and humility, even in the midst of great bloodshed, affliction, and high emotion. Quote, I had been a most bitter anti-South man and fought and cursed the Confederates desperately. I could see nothing good in any of them. A ball shattered my left, left leg. I lay on the ground not far from Cemetery Ridge, and it, as General Lee ordered his retreat, he and his officers rode near me. As they came along, I recognized him, and though faint from exposure and loss of blood, I raised up my hands, looked Lee in the face, and shouted as loud as I could, Hurrah for the Union! The General heard me, looked, stopped his horse, dismounted, and came towards me. I must confess, I at first thought he meant to kill me, but as he came up, he looked down at me with such a sad expression upon his face that all fear left me, and I wondered what he was about. He extended his hand to me, grasping mine firmly, and looking right into my eyes, said, My son, I hope you will soon be well. If I live to a thousand years, I shall never forget the expression on General Lee's face. There he was, defeated, retiring from a field that had cost him and his cause almost their last hope. And yet he stopped to say words like those to a wounded soldier of the opposition who had taunted him as he passed by. As soon as the general had left me, I cried myself to sleep there upon the bloody ground. If General Lee were to return today, I truly believe that he would be proud of Cap Alpha. We are one of the few institutions left in this country that still believes in the principles that Lee stood for. KA brings that message to undergraduate men every year, that every boy must be a gentleman, that there was a certain quality of life that existed in the Old South that needs to be preserved and protected for future generations. To know the human Lee is to admire him, and is it any wonder that our Founding Fathers did just that? The Founding Fathers of the Cap Alpha Order knew Robert E. Lee. They touched the hands of Lee. The KAs you see around you here tonight are direct descendants of that heritage. Yes, Cap Alpha is fortunate to have a man like Robert E. Lee to look up to and emulate. We are honored to say we hold Robert Edward Lee in such high esteem because he left us a legacy that time cannot erase. I've been speaking before groups of KAs about Robert E. Lee for many years, and the interest and, enthusiasms and enthusiasm of our undergraduates are the same today as it was 30 years ago. I am honored to have been asked here tonight, and I thank you for your gracious, gracious hospitality. Thank you.